In the gospel, we hear the risen Jesus confirming his power. All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And then he gives his disciples what we refer to as the Great Commission. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that he says in the name and not in the names. There's three persons, the Father, Son, and Spirit. But he says in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. That's the great commission given to his disciples and now to us. The mystery of the Holy Trinity is a basic doctrine of the faith understandable not with our heads but with our hearts it teaches us that there are three distinct persons in one God sharing the divine nature co-equal and co-eternal so one plus one plus one equals one It's not the new math, it's the divine math. This is impossible to comprehend, but we believe in the mystery, this mystery because Jesus spoke it so clearly. The the evangelist recorded it. The early fathers confirmed it in their writings in the Council of Nicaea in 325 and the Council of Constantinople in 381 defined it as a dogma of the Christian faith and we profess that creed that was created in the Council of Nicaea after every Sunday Mass, except during the Lenten season, right after the homily, we profess the Nicene Creed. All prayers in the church begin in the name of the Holy Trinity and in glorifying the Holy Trinity. We are baptized, confirmed, anointed, our sins forgiven, our marriages blessed, and our bishops, priests, and deacons are ordained in the name of the Holy Trinity. We bless ourselves in the name of the Holy Trinity, making the sign of the cross over our bodies to remind us that the Trinity dwells in us, you know, you know that I grew up with a big family. I grew up with four brothers and four sisters. And we gathered around the table, and a lot of times there was a lot of noise. And the way to, that dad would quieten us down is he would start with, in the name. And if the noise kept going on, he would say it louder, in the name. And then finally, in the name. And we all were quiet by then, and we all made the sign of the cross. And then, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, etc. And then we sat down to eat. And, uh, uh, and, and so... Um, Right away, when I say, in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, we have a tendency to make that sign. Um, and, and, en el nombre del Padre y del Hijo del Espíritu Santo, in Spanish. Or, vemeno otse sino duco suatejo. Amen. In Czech. Or, en, en, en el nome, en, en nomene Patris et Filii et Spiritus Santi, in Latin. And, You'll have to see Father Paul for Greek and Hebrew and Arabic. Ask him, and he'll do it. And 10 minutes later, you will know all kinds of 
in the names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every one of the languages uses the Trinitarian sign of the cross. And it's beautiful. Um, so, um, our belief in the presence of the triune God within us should remind us of the value to value ourselves as God's holy dwelling. To lead holy lives, practicing justice and charity to all, giving respect and honor to others as temples of the Holy Trinity. We are created in love to be in to be a community of loving persons, just as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one in love. From the day of our baptism, we have belonged to the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The love, unity, and joy in the relationship among the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit should be a model for our relationships within our families, within our communities. We are made in God's image and likeness. So just as God is in an eternal relationship, in the interaction of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we too become fully human when we are in relationship with God and one another. We have a horizontal relationship with all other people. And we have a vertical relationship with God. We even sign our, our bodies with that vertical relationship in the name of the Father and of the Son. And then that horizontal relationship and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so... We're always reminded, constantly reminded of the need for us to be in relationship with God and with one another. It's, it can't just be me, myself, and I, which is very tempting in this world of individualism and consumerism. It has to be I in my relationship with God and in my relationship with my neighbor. In other words, I am a Christian insofar as I am in relationship with God and with other people. Like God the Father, we are called upon to be productive and creative persons by building up the body of Christ, making disciples of all nations. Like God the Son, we are called to a life of sacrificial love and service so that we may be reconcilers and peacemakers, putting back together that which has been broken and restoring what has been shattered. Like God the Holy Spirit, we are called to uncover and teach others to observe all that Jesus has commanded. We are called to be like the Trinity in our complete outpouring of love, in our marriages, in our friendships, and in our families. We are called to completely receive the poor and the marginalized and the vulnerable. Just like our Trinitarian God, our love cannot be contained within ourselves or our closest relationships. This true love must burst forth into the life of the community and the church and the world. So our practice this week, just as he commanded the first disciples to do good work, to go, to go and make disciples. God prepares good works for us to do. We are encouraged to get out of our comfort zones 
and set out to encounter the hungry and the broken and the lost. To serve others here at St. Anne's and to serve here in our local community, in our diocese and beyond. We are asking you to make a concrete commitment to serve others. You can go to our website, St. Anne Parish slash serve, and you'll find various ways to enter into service here in our community, whether it's to be ushers or archangels or uh, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion or any other area of service right here within our Holy Masses. Um, you can also uh, find ways and, 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 and enter into ways that we also enter into partnership with Catholic Charities Dallas, which is referred to as CCD. Catholic Charities Dallas is another way that you can find uh, that you can serve. At the entrances and also in the Northex, we have these little cards, particularly for Catholic Charities. During this pandemic, which, believe it or not, still is going on, the Catholic Charities has been hit hard for a need to people, not only to volunteer their services, but also to give um, financially. And this card will help you to do just that. They'll be at all the entrances of, and, and at the narthex uh, in the Welcome Center especially. Pick up one of these and it'll give you an easy way to give a little something to Catholic Charities for all the work that they do, for the thousands of people that they help in North Texas to help fund all their charitable work and their work for justice. Um, and, um, and then, obviously, we should not stop praying. Next week, in the, in the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, we are uh, asking people to sign up for the PEA chapel so that we can begin that again after so long being without. We need people to pray and pray and pray so we can call more people into service. And particularly that PEA chapel was created to, to engender and foster vocations to the priesthood and the religious life. Um, we need more people to say yes to entering into seminaries and into the religious orders and religious life. Um, and I just end with this little, this little um, um, suggestion of prayer um, before, you, before you go to bed at night. It just takes a couple of maybe three, three minutes. But I like to end my day with uh, a Trinitarian prayer. I, I thank the Father for all the blessings and the graces that I have received throughout the day. Uh, and I can maybe even name a couple of people and say, thank you, Lord, for her or him, or thank you, Lord, for the words you placed in my heart to say to someone. Um, and, and, and I say, thank you, Father. And then I go to the Son, Jesus, and I ask forgiveness for any areas where of weakness in my day, where I have said perhaps the wrong things or hurt someone throughout the day. And I say, please forgive me, Lord. Uh, and then for the Holy Spirit, I look to the next day. I may be seeing somebody that may have a challenge. And I say, Lord, give me the wisdom to uh, be able to say the right things to this person. Our Lord, help me to, um, to say the right thing in my, in my homily uh, tomorrow, etc. Uh, so it's real simple, and it can happen just like that. 
And you know what? It helps me to rest a lot better when I go to bed uh, because I have prayed to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.